People are often shocked when I tell them that addiction was the best thing that ever happened to me. But it's true. It was. Most people go through this life living each day not much different from the next. We are born impressionless, doughy little babies into a world that carves its fear and love of conformity into us. We are told to pick the safe path, to get a job that pays well, to marry a man who provides, become a woman who provides, save our money, buy property, procreate, and die with as few wrinkles as humanly possible. We are sold the lie that if we do the things that keep us safe, we will be okay. As if it were a proven formula. 401k equals safety equals happiness. When I was 14 years old, my parents divorced. My mom was born with congenital hip dysplasia, and by the time I graduated junior high, she'd already had both her hips replaced. As of this writing, she's had eight hip replacements. She'd been a stay-at-home mom for my entire childhood, and with my parents' divorce came economic uncertainty. She had to go back to both work and school. She never said it to me directly, but I knew enough to understand that we were barely making it and that our new circumstances wore her health down and her hips out. I hated the fragility of our situation. I hated the idea that we were poor. I hated how much money ruled our lives. But mostly, I hated that when my mom felt pain in her hips, my first thought wasn't whether she was okay. No, my first thought was always, I wonder if she'll have to stop working. I wonder if we'll run out of money. If there was one thing I wasn't going to be when I grew up, it was poor. When I was 13, my family had Thanksgiving at my cousin Sarah's in Pasadena. Sarah's 25 years older than me, and she'd just gotten her CPA, married an oil executive, and bought a four-bedroom Spanish-style house in a neighborhood that bordered San Marino. The best schools. She drove a Volvo and made dinners that rivaled Martha Stewart's, and was the kind of woman that kept truffles in the pantry. She bought me my first Starbucks on that trip, and I remember wanting to be her when I grew up and her exactly, or Amanda Woodward from Melrose Place. Either would do because both had everything I was supposed to have. Not long after that Thanksgiving, my parents' marriage started to fall apart, or rather, my dad's closeted gayness outgrew the walk-in. I imagine that in his desperation to not have to come out, and in my mom's desperation to not know he had anything to come out with— they thought a series of weekend getaways to reasonably priced motels on the central coast of California might do the trick. It was the summer before my freshman year of high school, and their Hail Mary attempt to save their marriage meant weekends of my 16-year-old sister and my 13-year-old self alone in our house. The first time I got drunk was during one of these weekends, and while I don't recognize myself in the stories that recovered alcoholics tell of the first sip being the answer to every prayer they ever had, I do remember trying to drink as fast as I possibly could. I wasn't hungry to feel something different. If anything, I was hungry to be someone different. Or maybe I was just hungry to be bad. 